to learn how to take the Laplace transform of the unit step function. The unit step function is usually written as u with a subscript of c of t. And this means that it is the step function, so it is 0 until it reaches some value c, and then it is 1 for the rest of time. So that is the graph of u sub c of t. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and so you might be saying, well, how is this function useful at all? It's so simple. Boo. But basically you could use it to model anything like a square wave or anything that jumps suddenly. Or it could be a good approximation for anything that is anything close to a sudden jump, even if it kind of angles up to that other level slightly. Um, it's, it can be pretty powerful, and maybe we'll make that clear in this video. So now let's start, let's look at this with a more fancy sophisticated function. So say we have some function that is 2 until it reaches the value pi. And then from pi to 2 pi, it's 0. And then from 2 pi until the rest of time, it goes back to being 2. So it jumps from the top down to 0, back up to the top, which is the value 2. So the graph of this function would look kind of like this. And there it is. So for this function, if we were to write this as just a normal f of t, we could use, do that using the unit step function. So we could say it's f of t is equal to 2 minus, and then so it's u, the step function of t, but if we just did the step function of t, it would just go to 1. When it's no long, once it reaches c. And we want it to go to 2, so we need to multiply it by 2. So we have 2 times u sub pi of t. Because this means, and then this term, the u sub pi of t, just becomes 1 at once the function reaches pi, once t equals pi. So then that just becomes 2 minus 2, which makes it 0, which is what happens once t is equal to pi. So then, to get it to jump back up again, we would use this unit step function of 2 pi of t, but this once again would bring it only back up to 1, because that's the job of the unit step function, so we need to multiply it by 2 to get it to go back up to 2. So the total function is 2 minus 2 times the unit step value of pi of t, plus 2 times the unit step, value, unit step function of 2 pi of t. And I hope that makes sense. Um, it's kind of, it's, this is pretty powerful because it's saying that you can make any function that jumps up and down as a linear combination of unit step functions. That's kind of the importance of this unit step function. And you should all know what a linear combination is by this point in the semester. So if that is confusing to you, then maybe that's a signal of something to go back and watch. Or perhaps that could be your final project is in order to gain that understanding of what a linear combination is, make videos of it like we're doing. So now let's look at some more difficult functions. So say we just have some function f of t that's just kind of a polynomial that dips and has, goes up and down a little bit. It's not just a quadratic, but it's some polynomial. It doesn't really matter what. So now, what if we have a function that is 0 up until some point c, and then it is that function? No, sorry. Here. So we can say that this is the function f of t minus c, because it is shifted to the right c units. If you need to remind yourself that t minus c shifts the function to the right, just plug in values for t, such as c, c plus 1, etc. Um, that's something you should hopefully remember from algebra or algebra 2 
or some past school year, so we aren't going to go over that. So now we can say that this is the, we can write this function as the unit step function of c of t, so u sub c of t, times this function f of t minus c. So then when c is less than zero, the u sub c of t is just going to be zero. So that, that, anything times zero is obviously zero, so that just means that whole function that we just wrote, u sub c of t times f of t minus c, until, when, as long as t is less than c, that will all be zero. Then, once we reach c and from every point on, the unit step function jumps to 1, because at c it jumps to 1. So then you just are left with the function of t minus c. And that's perfect, that's what we want, because then at that point the, the polynomial takes over. So now, let's look at the Laplace transform of this function.